apologetics must, must be a part of church discipleship. That's why morality is relative in Americans throughout the West today, because man now determines truth. And I believe that that's why the nation is in the state it's in, because uh, they don't know the Word of God, and because the church has failed, in a sense, to hold forth the Word of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today our guest is Dr. Ted Bear. Welcome. No relation to Paddington, by the way. <laughs> You have a new book out called Real to Real, 45 movie devotions for families. Now you're famous because of your movie guide that's been around since you said 1985? 1985 and we've yeah. grown tremendously and a lot of yeah. parents use movie guide. And the for Hollywood people who don't know what it is, can you explain movie what Movie guide is? is a biblical guide to movies and entertainment and uh, the Hollywood Reporter last year shocked us. They said a third of the parents in the United States use movie guide. It's very solid, very clear, very precise. We analyze movies from 150 criteria, including aesthetics, because that's mm -hmm. the look of it, including the semantics, because that's the language. And we put all that together so that you can help the kids to know. Then I was just with somebody else who said, the nice thing about the site is you look at it, it's easy to find, it's easy to know before your kids go, it's easy to be prepared. And we've got a big backlog of, of movies, so we're very comprehensive. And we're here to help you. We're really here to help you develop discernment for your kids and tell, help them develop the wisdom to choose the good and reject the bad. That's good. So tell us about Real to Real. Now, Real to Real grew out of this. I grew up uh, in the movie industry because I just showed you my parents who were in the mm -hmm. movie industry. And you recognized uh, one of them, if mm -hmm. not two of them. I grew up as a, I say, a Broadway brat. I mean, I was really very bad. You wouldn't have wanted to know me. My mother died when I was young, so I went off the deep end and did all these things. And four women who had come to Christ through Billy Graham crusade, 14 years after my mother died, uh, started taking my father to Christian events. He didn't come to Christ until five, seven years after me. But mm -hmm. and because uh, one of them had a crush on my father, he was a cute guy, <laughs> and he'd take me to protect himself from these four women, and who had come to Christ through the Billy Graham crusade. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold. Um, uh, I kept walking. I said, these Christians are crazy. And so one of them said, why don't you just read the Bible and tell me what's wrong with it? So after a couple of months of fighting and saying, no, I'm not going to read it, I read, I'll read the short part, the little New Testament. Forget the old one. I figured the New Testament had to be the condensed version, <laughs> you know, the cliff notes. And I got halfway through Matthew and God got a hold of my heart. And I started praying in, uh, in a uh, little Presbyterian church. And they said, why don't you come on Sunday? And I said, what do you do on Sunday? And they told me, and I said, that's great. What time? 9 a.m. Now, who gets up at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning? you got to be crazy. <laughs> so, um, you know, 70% of the people in the United States have never gone to church. And Barnard 70%? talks about And only 8% of the people who have never gone to church have been invited to church. And 4% become Christians of the 8, you know, the uh, 70 percent. We need to invite more people to yeah, go to church. Yeah, that's terrible. It's terrible. We don't invite people to church. We don't tell them about Jesus. So mm -hmm. I came to Christ and I be went to a seminary that owned the rights to the Chronicles of Narnia to line the Witch of the Wardrobe and we put it on CBS television and won an Emmy Award and had 37 million viewers. And I said, you know, this isn't what I want to do. I want to help families. Mm -hmm. I want to help the most important person in Hollywood is a teenager who goes to movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they choose a good movie like Paddington or something <laughs> uplifting, it'll go. Or, I, you know, I can imagine they're one of those great mm -hmm. Christian movies. Or if they choose something bad like 50, whatever, I'm not going to tell you what the name of that movie is. It's Fifty Shades. It's terrible. Oh, oh. All those things. If they, That'll do well. And mm -hmm. it did well its first weekend. So the kids are the most powerful people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Michael Eisner who lost his job. It's not Rupert Murdoch who just sold his studio. It's not... Mm -hmm. Walt Disney, you know, it's none of those people. It's a, it's a 12 to 24 year old who goes to movies. So mm -hmm. what we wanted to do with the book, what I wanted to do with the book, I've got Movie Guide, I teach people how to teach their kids to be culture wise, is that children don't read. Mm -hmm. I've got 11 grandchildren. So you show them a movie and mm -hmm. it can change their life. Mm -hmm. And then you show them the biblical principles of the movie. And some of the movies are really wonderful. You know, it's a wonderful life. Mm -hmm. When I came to Christ, one of the things that led me to Christ was a friend told me, you should watch a It's a Wonderful Life. So I watched it at Christmas, and I wept, and I thought it was so great. And <laughs> then you can see the biblical principles, that God mm -hmm. has a plan for your life. 
-hmm. And where do you find that? You find it in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, <laughs> where he says, you know, rejoice always, give thanks in all circumstances, mm -hmm. and pray constantly for that is God's will of Christ Jesus for you. It's the only place where it says God's will. So you mm -hmm. tie that in to what the movie is saying. Yeah. You know, be That's thankful. That's great. I've, I've always thought movies were great um, avenues for teaching lessons and for having discussion um, with young people, especially teenagers. And so I'm really glad that you've done this. It is. Now, did you did you write another book? Um, I've written 36 Called books. Culture Wise? Culture Wise Family. That's what I thought. That's the principles of teaching your children to be culture wise. Is that still when in I print? Was, when, I was head of, when I was going to seminary, I supported mm -hmm. myself by being head of the TV department at City University of New York. And okay. we had uh, 60 professors come together and develop the first media literacy course. That's still in print. Good. You can still get everything at movieguide.org. And do you actually teach classes to people on, I on do. how to... I do. I teach classes. And I teach classes how to make great movies without losing your soul. So. Oh, wow. So, uh, That's so. great. So do you go around to different cities to do this, or do you do it in... I'm in Nashville. <laughs> and I'm going to Lookout Mountain. So you I'm go going all back over to, and do it. Back to L.A., then I'm going to uh, mm -hmm. Little Rock, then I'm going to... Atlanta, then I'm going to Chapel Hill, then I'm going so you, you go all to over. Africa, then I'm going to <laughs> Nairobi, et cetera. Yeah. Well, that's good. So if people want to know, I mean, obviously they can get your books, but if they actually wanted to hear you speak, would they find this on a website where they you would. what your schedule is? We have is? all the schedule on the website, movieguide.org. Oh, okay. It has a complete mm -hmm. uh, outline of what we do and how we do it. And you can always contact me through movieguide.org. Okay. You know, I like to answer emails, and I really I believe in answering people and helping people. Boy, that's unusual. Well, you want to minister for, for to a big people. ministry like ministry that. Ministry means service. Yeah, it does. No, that's it does. what we're doing. We're serving parents and children. So, do you have a favorite um, devotion or a favorite yeah. movie that you talk about in here? Well, I have a lot of favorite movies. A lot of so favorite. you know, I've, when it's, you're a movie buff, it's kind of hard yeah, not to. I have a, yeah. yeah, but <laughs> since I was head of a department at Berkeley, or yeah. when I was teaching it at USC, you know, they'd ask me that question. I'd given an obtuse little movie that won the Cannes Film Festival Award, Tree of Wooden Clogs, because none of them had seen it. So they wouldn't argue with me. So then I could go on to teaching them. So what can this book do for families? Okay, well, finding those biblical principles is important for the family. One of my favorite movies of all time, you asked me a favorite movie, is Finding Nemo. Oh, because yeah. it's about a father's love that he'll do anything. So Andrew Stanton, who wrote uh, Finding Nemo, came to the Movie God Awards, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, my little boy, Andrew's a Christian, asked me about the story of um, the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. So this is the story. The prodigal son runs away, but in this case, the father goes after him. Mm -hmm. And within the story, he puts the story of Jonah and the whale. You know, when little Marlon gets caught in the whale, can you speak whale? Oh, you know, the, <laughs> I love that part. It's, uh, so. But every little scene there is taking mm -hmm. from a Bible Mm. So the whole meaning of the movie is that God loves you so much that he will go to the ends of the earth to rescue you. What oh, a wow, great that meaning is great. that is, yeah. that he loves you so much. That there's mm. nobody out there that he doesn't love in a right. powerful way. Yeah. So are there other examples you'd like to share from the book? Oh, there are just tons of them. But, uh, Give me one or two. <laughs> one person was shocked because we chose Smurfs. And in oh. Smurfs... One of the Smurfs is, is uh, created, uh, mm. but has a Christological allegory, sort of like Aslan in The Lion, uh, the Witch, and the right. Wardrobe, uh -huh. Smurfette. And to, she doesn't know what her purpose is. She finds her purpose when she dies for her village, and she's resurrected. Oh. So it's a beautiful, no allegory is perfect. Only the Bible right. is perfect. Right. But allegories help you approach the truth, as C.S. Lewis said. Uh -huh. Okay. So is there anything on your heart that you would like to share with the viewers? Well, we've never had so many movies with positive Christian content. When we started uh, in 1978 and then Movie Guide in 1985, there was only 1% of the movies with positive Christian content. And when we started, there was a book out called Hollywood Babylon about how horrible Hollywood was. And now it's up to 62% of the movies have some positive or strong, not just some. They have strong or very strong positive Christian, redemptive, or moral content. Mm -hmm. So if you go to movieguide.org, you can find out what those movies are. 
So, but those movies need support at the box office. Yes. You know, if you go see it, Samson came out much better than a lot of Hollywood movies, but it didn't do well at the box office. And it came up against that horrible movie, Fifty Shades. Mm. So you have a choice that weekend. You, every time you go, you can vote. I don't you know, think people realize the first weekend that a film so is out. Important. Yeah, and it's very, very average, important. You know, there are 118 million people who go to church every week and only uh, 17 million, uh, 24 million people who go to movies. Uh, seven to five times more people who go to church than movies. And churchgoers buy one more ticket a year than other moviegoers. They mm. buy more tickets. They're the biggest audience group. They can change the industry by supporting the good. So when you see wow. those Christians coming movies coming out, support them. Right, exactly. Yeah, a lot of them will say, oh, I'll wait for the DVD. And don't they don't wait understand. For the DVD. You gotta get out there. Yeah, they've got it. If we don't support the movies, they won't have the money to make any more of them. Right? right? Yeah. How would you um, recommend that parents engage their their children when they've watched a movie, like maybe having a family night or something, or watching a movie and having you know, some fun snacks or something, engage them in the content of the movie after they've watched it. Do you think that's a good thing to do, or do you think that would feel like ruining the entertainment to the kids? No, no it never ruins the entertainment, because kids like to talk about movies. Mm -hmm. If their favorite team has just won the Super Bowl, they want to talk about it. And they ask questions, like, did you see that pass? Why didn't that right. work? So what you have to do is ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. So the Culture Wise Family Book and the Media Wise Family Book have these questions that you ask. Who is the hero? Mm -hmm. And let's say who is the hero in Finding Nemo. It's really Marlon who goes and rescues. He's a father mm -hmm. who will do anything to save his son. Mm -hmm. So is he good? a good hero? And of course, there are a lot of bad heroes in the mm -hmm. in movie industry every day. Yeah. I mean, one of the big Academy Award movies is about a guy who takes advantage of an underage boy. Mm -hmm. Big movie, it's winning the Academy yeah. Award, and he leaves him afterwards. Now. If this is an abuse or me too, I don't know what is. So um, who is the hero? How does the hero fulfill the plot problem? Does mm -hmm. he do it with love or does he do it with killing, maiming, mm -hmm. mutilating, et cetera? Yeah. Who is the villain? Mm -hmm. And one of the movies that is up for Academy Award, the villains are all Christians. So clearly they're making the Christians the, actually two of the movies. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, So that's The Shape of Water is another one where the Christians mm -hmm. are the bad guys. So you have to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. And we give them 150 questions, and they relate to all those criteria, mm -hmm. so you can know what to do. And it's fun. You can make it fun. Yeah, it can be a lot of fun. Again, your website is? Movieguide.org. Movieguide. Movieguide.org. Find out everything you needed to know. And real to real. And it's, it's 45 movie devotions for families. It's R-E-E-L to R-E-A-L. That's a good title. Thank you so much for being our guest. Really appreciate God it. God bless you. You're wonderful. Okay. I know.